All right, ladies and gentlemen, you are locked on Falcons. I'm your host, Aaron Freeman, and I am joined once again by Alan Sterk. And we are going to be continuing our Falcons all time draft series. But now we're going through the first six rounds, picking the best defensive players in Falcons history. You are Locked On Falcons, your daily Atlanta Falcons podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So, guys, you know me, I'm Aaron Freeman, been covering the Falcons for many years, formerly at FalFans.com, RIP, still going strong on Twitter at FalFans, and of course, the host of this illustrious Locked On Falcons podcast, your daily Atlanta Falcons podcast, part of the Locked On Sports Atlanta podcast family. And we thank you guys for making Locked On Falcons your first listen each and every day. Locked On Falcons is free and available Monday through Friday on a variety of podcast platforms, including Apple, Odyssey, Google, Spotify, as well as on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to Locked on Falcons on YouTube. Give us a like, hit that bell, and you will get the video version of the podcast the night before the audio drops. So we are back once again with my former Locked on Falcons, Falcons fans podcast co-host Alan Sterk, part three of our four-part summer series uh, where we will be doing the Falcons all-time draft. If you missed the first two parts, then my guys, what, what you've been vacationing or something like that in the middle of July? What, what's going on with that? Like, you guys got to be doing. But basically, this is us going back and forth drafting uh, in a snake-like fantasy-style draft, the best players from Falcons history. We already did the offense in the first two parts. We'll do the defense over the next two parts. Today, we'll do six rounds out of 12-round format. It will be snake draft style so one pick for me two picks for alan two picks for me you know that how that whole thing um and unlike offense there's not going to be as much flexibility in terms of positions right you you know we we sort of set the parameters for defensive linemen two linebackers three corners two safeties and then a flex or i guess technically five dbs so i guess you could go three safeties if, if you really wanted to go but Basically, you know, not as much flexibility within how you want to build your defense. And we'll only be, of course, selecting from players in Falcons history. And Alan, is there any other thing that I'm supposed to say to the people before we get started? Nope. You outlined it brilliantly. Okay. And because I got the first pick when we flipped the coin for the offense, Alan will get the first pick today kicking us off. So we'll go through six rounds and we'll sort of talk about it, recap, and we'll see if, uh, you know, Alan is more prepared for my curveballs uh when we go defense uh than he was when we went offense so alan you are now officially on the clock yeah, you went 2010 falcons offense i'm wondering maybe you'll go like two four 2014 falcons defense and just you know be tough you know, it's, it's gonna be tough Aaron. well you know robert alford is on my radar so we'll see <laughs> All right, but you got to draft three defensive tackles and play one of them on the edge. You know, yeah, just there you go. Be. There you go. But uh, unlike your typical draft, I'm not going to waste any time because I've had more than 24 hours to think about this. I'm going to make the biggest move. I'm going Deion Sanders. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. I figured he would be the number one pick, but yeah. Just have sense. to do it. I know he doesn't have the greatest resume in Falcons defensive history, just given he was on the team long, but – Come on, it's Deion Sanders. What more has to be said? Yeah, he was he was number one on my draft board, so uh, I I'm I'm with you on that one. So I, I'm I'm gonna do it. I, I'm gonna go. I got two picks, so I'm gonna go two three on my draft board. I'm gonna go you know borrow a page from Terry Fontenot and go BPA. Um, and I'm gonna go with Claude Humphrey and John Abraham back to back. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I didn't think you were going to do it, and you did. Yeah, I had to do it. I had to do it. Uh, Deion Sanders, who I desperately wanted, so I'm going to hurt you by taking away John Abraham from you. I'm I'm so hurt right now. Why did you make this brilliant decision? Well, I mean, like when you think of, you know, historically great 
Falcons defensive players. Um, you know, those three guys, Dion, Claude Humphrey, John Abraham, are probably three out of the five people that most people think about. Um, I'll be curious if if you get the fourth and fifth guy that I'm I'm thinking of coming up. But um yeah, man, like Claude Humphrey, Hall of Famer, all time leader in sacks, even though most of his career came before sacks were officially a stat. We know John Abraham dominated in the what six years that he was uh, Atlanta, seven years he was an Atlanta Falcon. You know, he he called you out on Twitter, all all that stuff. So, you know, he's he's got a special place in my heart for that. You just had to put that in there. Of course. <laughs> it wasn't the several double digit uh when I say double digit multi sack games. Who who could forget that two thousand eight game against Oakland when he had three sacks? Just what a player. And then Claude Humphrey. To me, Claude Humphrey has the greatest resume when it comes to Falcons defensive players. Like you look at what he's done, you know, he really you could really make a strong case for him, number one, uh, just based on what he's accomplished. But man, not only you pick two phenomenal players, but think about this, like and obviously we're gonna get to our board later. There are not a lot of edge rushers that you could pick from in Falcons history. And I think based on the team's recent history, you understand why. There are just not a lot of accomplished pass rushers, and you've got two of the best ones. There's and- there's a couple of good guys that I think you, you'll be happy with, you know, assuming that you take two guys later in the draft. I think there's a couple of guys that you'll be happy with. There's one um, or two. I, I'll say this too, but like to me, you took the two true. Yeah, ones. yeah, yeah. I think that's true. Like you got two that are just legit top three, top five at their position at a time. Just pure elite edge rushers. So it was you, man. You know I built the team. What's your next two picks, Alan? All right. Well, I'm gonna follow my board. You know, we're we're gonna st- if, if we're gonna go with the theme in this draft, it's gonna be the Terry Fontenot team. Just <laughs> following the board. You want to go double? Edge rusher, cool. I'm going to double dip on linebacker and just get that done. I'm going Jesse Tuggle, Tommy Nobis. Okay, those were those were the two guys I was thinking of as the five, the last two iconic. Options. Jesse Tuggle, five-time Pro Bowler, one-time second team All-Pro, Ring of Honor. And you have Tommy Nobis, one-time defensive rookie. Oh, well, defensive rookie year, excuse me. One-time All-Pro, one-time second team All-Pro. He was the all decades team 1960 in the 1960s. And uh, what do I have here listed? Oh, five Pro Bowls. So these two guys, their resumes are decorated. I had Tuggle slightly ahead of Nobis just because I've actually seen Tuggle play, but Tommy Nobis, who's going to knock him. So yeah, I'm going a little bit of a weird strategy here, but you know what? I'm just going for star power. And I'm pretty bummed that you took two edge rushes. So I'm going to take two linebackers and put you at a disadvantage there. Well, you talk about the drop off, you know, from the top two edge rushers to the next tier, like the drop off from the top two linebackers to the next tier to me is, is pretty massive. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, we're working. You know, we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll talk about my strategy once we're all like completely wrapped up, but I'll, I'll take my third pick now. Um, and I'm, I'm going to take my guy, I'm, I, you know, I'm going to be the anti Falcons and we're, we're building up. The, the defensive line. I'm gonna take Jonathan Bappin out here. Okay, that's you gotta admit that's a reach, but you know the brand is strong. The brand is strong. I, I took Ovi Mahaley in round six last time. Uh, I'm taking Jonathan Bappin in round three, <laughs> just because. Look, you know some of these other the once we get to the you know you took Dion. I, I think the defensive backs like there's some good guys on the board, but like there's nobody. That I'm like, oh, I gotta get that guy. So I'm okay. just like I'm gonna get the D D line set on my team. Yeah. I I'm just curious, well, where was he on your board? I got I gotta I gotta ask. Who Babs? Yeah, he was four. Are you? Okay. Yeah. Well, that's that's how that's someone's how someone's ranked with the heart. He he he's 15 on mine, and this is me being a totally objective. Like well, he's up look, he's I, up there. I think you're you're that's fair to place him if you're talking about. You know where he fits in in all-time Falcon defensive players. Yeah, yeah oh. I'm, I don't think he's the fourth best player in Falcons no. defensive history, but I had to get my guy. You know, right, like right. I got to get my guy. Yeah. So damn, your D line, Jesus, and, and right. we know my guards are questionable. We <laughs> do know that. Babino <laughs> against Blaylock. I'm not well, liking my chances. I got another pick coming, so oh, you know. Boy. Don't tell me you're doing that. I, that why have a feeling you're gonna do this. <laughs> Okay, but you know we'll, we'll get to that pick in a second. We'll leave you with suspense. That's what they call in this industry a tease. 
Uh, so we got a couple more rounds to go, you know, rounds four through six uh, to wrap up, you know, part three slash part one of the defense here on this Falcons all time draft series. So obviously we got more to come, guys, but we're going to take a moment to tell you about the folks at Built Bar who produce a protein bar that tastes just like a candy bar, but it's even better than a candy bar because Built Bars not only taste good, they're good for you. They're low in sugar, calories and carbs, high in protein and fiber. you got limited time flavors like the raspberry lemonade, a perfect concoction to quench your thirst during the summer, but now you're getting a little bit more protein. Uh, in that pink lemonade. Uh, you also got the coconut brownie chunk, uh, which is one of Built Bar's best flavors ever. But now they have the coconut brownie chunk puff. So it's adding to that flavor with the chewy, fluffy, marshmallowy goodness that comes with all the puff flavors covered in 100% real chocolate. All Built Bars are covered in 100% chocolate, whether you're getting those limited time flavors or the tried and trues like brownie batter puff, cookies and cream, double chocolate, coconut almond, cherry barcia, mint brownie, peanut butter brownie, salted caramel, raspberry, and so much more. So find your favorite or order yourself a mixed box by trying them all by heading over to built.com and when you do use the promo code lock 15 and you'll get 15 percent off your order that's promo code lock 15 l-o-c-k-e-d-1-5 for 15 percent off at built.com so we're coming back uh with uh round four here uh of the falcons all-time draft series here with alan sterk you know i've gone deep in line heavy uh, Allen's, you know, gone more middle of his defense with the two linebackers in rounds two and three, but like, I'm going to make it a clean sweeping and get my D line set right here. And there's two guys that I have my eyes on as interior D linemen. And I, you know, would love to have both of these guys on my team, but I can only pick one and I'm going with Grady Jarrett. He was high for me. I'm I'm pretty bummed I didn't get him. Oh man, you you got you just have some the first step. Yeah. Good oh, luck, man. Matt Ryan. Your quarterback. He's 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 dying. Man, I wanted to build an offensive line for Matt Ryan. <laughs> I think my tackles are set with uh with Ken and Claybo, but oh my interior. Oh man. Yeah, oh, I think you can make a case game. that I, I got like four out of the like the seven, maybe best pass rushers in falcons history is that fair uh looking at my list yeah i think you missed out on a one yeah uh, who i'm probably gonna have to take very soon but you know you do have a flex by the way you could you could just take another defensive lineman I later could. i could you, you could I, just because the the guy i want i was yeah we'll yeah. get to that later we'll but see. You're, it's not gonna happen though because he's gonna okay. be my player now because i just can't allow it one of my favorite players growing up I just remember jumping up and down in pajamas as a nine-year-old watching him play. Pat Kearney. I love it. I'm so happy he's on my team to take it. One of the true last edge rushers left on my board that I really want. So uh, Patrick Kearney. I totally forgot he was a monster on the Seahawks in 2007. I, I, I don't remember that because I was just so sad he was not on the Falcons anymore. But Patrick Kearney, one-time second-team All-Pro. I believe that was from the, his monster 2004 season. One time pro bowler, and he had three double digit sack seasons with the Falcons. So, who doesn't love Pat Kern? He's he's one of the true fan favorites. You know, we talk about like Jonathan Babino being a fan favorite. I think Pat Kern, you got put up there. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Um, didn't you have him on a podcast once? Yes, many years ago. Another Falcon Central radio reference. Oh, wow. Still, okay. He was not on this podcast, though. No, so, he was not on this podcast. And the brand is not quite strong. It's not that. It's not that strong. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I think now second pick. I think we're we're gonna go back into the history books here because I'm looking at my board and there's some names here. I think it's time to give a shout out to the Grits Blitz defense. Gonna go reach my pocket there. Roland Lawrence, the all-time leader in interceptions, will be my second corner. One-time All-Pro, one-time Pro Bowler, and he's just someone that I think. If you look at it resume wise, the best corner to play on the Falcons, not named Deion Sanders of all time. I think that's very fair. I think that's very fair. 
Huh, do I just want to just load up on another D? <laughs> I'm very tempted to take another defensive lineman just just to spite you, Alan, oh, and just God. be like, "Look, I'm going to have the greatest rotation of pass rushers in the, ever assembled in the history of Falcons football." I'm just excited to see what your secondary looks like. I want to know if your secondary is going to be as bad as like the 2003 Falcons secondary. It's not going to be terrible, but I don't think it's going to be as good as yours. So oh, definitely not. Um. We're gonna take a, we're gonna take someone in the secondary right now, and I'm gonna go with Scott Case Ooh, as my safety, as the one other sort of standout from the the rest of the crop um, safety here in round five, and then I'm gonna close things out. Do I really want to screw you over? <sighs> Oh man, God! Oh, you know what? I'm gonna do it, Alan. Just out of spite. Just... I, I mean, you're being vocal about, it, so you might as well do it. Because <laughs> well <do> <laughs> I, I know what you're gonna do to it. I'm livid. Um, I'm gonna go with Rod Coleman here. Okay, okay, not not what I was thinking, but good okay. pick. I, I I think it's a bit of a reach, given that he was on the team long. But when he was on a team, you want to talk about a force? Oof. Yeah, I mean, he, he he he. I put him in the same sort of Alex Mack tier where it's like he didn't play that long with the team, but he was very dominant when he did play for the team. One of the mm -hmm. best players in the league at the time when he played for the team. So um, I put Rod Coleman very high. He was the guy I was deciding between him and Grady Jarrett uh, last time because I, I kind of put them on equal footing just because, you know, Grady Jarrett's what, played six years. I think Coleman played like four years here in Atlanta. So, um, yeah, I'm going Rod Coleman here. Make sure that, Just to make sure that, you know, all the D linemen that you wind up picking, no one's going to ever hear of, except for maybe one of these guys. Okay. Also, I have a question. Where are you going to play Scott Case? Because he played like three different positions over the course of his career. I'm going to put him at safety okay. for now. But, Smart. you know, right. later I'll, I'll have to, you know, jumble up this probably secondary to, to, to try to get the best five guys on the field sometimes. So he might, he might wind up playing like nickel cornerback or something for me. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to wrap it up here. I got one more pick, and I'm going to jump into safety as well because there are, weren't a lot of safeties that made my list, and I do want to prioritize getting one. So I'm going to go Ray Brown, second all-time in interceptions. Never was a pro bowl or anything, but he had a long career with the Falcons, and I just think that longevity deserves a lot of praise. So I'm going to play him. I'm, I haven't decided what position yet. I'm leaning free safety, but time will tell. Okay. Well, we get six rounds in. Uh, I went heavy on D-line. I'm the anti-Falcons, anti-Dimitrov. We'll see about for Fontenot. Um, you know, he, he got Arnold Epichetti, so I, I can't I can't be too negative towards their desire to build up the, the D-line quite yet. Uh, hopefully, they'll get Jalen Carter and Will Anderson, and we'll never have to have the conversation about the Falcons not investing enough resources in their D-line. But mm. that's a conversation for 2023, and uh, we will leave that in 2023, and we'll – Wrap up today's episode here of the Falcons all-time draft series, uh, looking back at the past rather than the future. Uh, and we'll discuss sort of our thoughts, our picks so far uh, in these first six rounds as we continue today's episode. So we're wrapping up uh, part one of the two-part defensive part, part three of the four-part entire Falcons all-draft series. We've made six selections for those of you that decided to skip to the 20 minute mark of the podcast. Uh, recapping my selections, I went Claude Humphrey one, John Abraham two, John, uh, John Babineau three, Grady Jarrett four, Scott Case five, Rod Coleman six, going five D linemen with my first six picks. Allen being a little bit more traditional, getting more of a well rounded roster. Who could imagine? Went Deion Sanders one, Jesse Tuckle two, Tommy Nobis three. Patrick Kearney, four, Roland Lawrence, five, and Ray Brown, six. So you got players at pretty much every position, at least one player. I got pretty much nobody at other positions. And clearly we know sort of where my head is going to be at in round seven through 12. Um, but uh, I'm feeling pretty good about my, my unit. I know there are going to be some parts that are not going to be sexy by the time we get to the end of it, but I'm I'm just, you know, Again, anti Falcon. So we're gonna have a dominant pass rush, dominant D line. We'll just control the line of scrimmage. And you can, you know, if if Matt Ryan can hold up against my football team, then yeah, he'll probably be able to pick them apart with Roddy White and 
you know, who who else did you have? Uh, Alfred Andre Risen and Alger Crumpler, but I think I'll be fine. Who's covering Andre Risen? We might be putting uh, <laughs> Willie Moe on him or something like that. All right. <laughs> oh, you know, I wouldn't throw that name, man. That's a, <laughs> by the way, I have, don't have a player on my defense yet that played in the 2010s. So I think uh, if I'm going to hmm. – I got I to gotta appeal to a younger audience. I might have to switch it up a little bit. See, the Dion pick was purely like, all right, I need, it. I need star power. Because one thing about what you did that was great offensively is you have star power everywhere. Like you, you did a great job with that. Uh, in terms of your defensive strategy, I think it's very Eagles of you when you think about it. I don't think there's a franchise that overloads on defensive line more than the Eagles. So, uh, kind Howie of fitting. Roseman, just call me Howie Roseman. Yeah. So. <laughs> Sorry, how much the Eagles have beat up the Falcons over the years? I think it's kind of fitting. Uh, as for my strategy, I just I just kind of looked at my board and what was available was available. It wasn't too much strategy into it. Uh, I am still legitimately bummed. I didn't get. I was really targeting Abraham and Jared. So you gain both them hurt the soul, but it is what it is. You're not gonna get all the guys you want. And, I have my John Abraham jersey thrown on the floor right now, and I'm just sad I can't wear it. Yeah, well, I, you know, I'm wondering if my strategy is going to come back to bite me when we get to um, tomorrow's episode, just because I, you, I think your strategy is going to give you a much more balanced defense. You're going to not be weak at any position. You may not be like elite at any. I mean, the cornerbacks pretty solid. Uh, so uh, we'll we'll see how we'll see how that goes. But you know. I, I'm sitting here going like maybe I should have probably maybe gone in a different direction, um, but we'll see. Thing is, my D line can they handle your power of football at the moment. We don't have much of a D line. Yeah, but I mean, see now I'm looking at my board and I'm like, there's still a lot of good D linemen left. So I, I feel like you're still going to be able to get good players, and I probably should have done a better job. Some of these other positions are maybe a little bit thinner, and I probably should have been a little bit more aggressive, particularly at cornerback. But we'll see. Hell of a start. Hell of a start. It is quite the start. Uh, anything you want to add? Any sort of uh, teases you want to give for tomorrow when we get into you know the, the back end of this draft? Um, I think the only thing we can really say is I think you're going to see a lot more players that you're familiar with. Because that's because I I had 29 players on my defensive board, and it, as I was putting together a list, I was like, okay, there are a lot more players from the 2010s at the bottom. Yeah, that's 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 pretty fair. I think most of the guys I have left on my board played in the last 30 years, I would say. There's some guys from the 90s in there. But there there's a there's a couple of still like 70s guys and 80s guys, but I'm not sure how many of them I will wind up drafting, but we'll see. Okay. Well, that is it for us, guys. Uh, part three of this four-part series, uh, Falcons All-Time Draft Series. Again, always looking to workshop the title. We'll retroactively re rename these. Uh, if you come up with a great title to leave in the comments or hit me up uh, via Twitter or Facebook at Lockdown Falcons, you can, of course, uh, send an email to LockdownFalcons at mail.com. You can tell us why uh, one of our teams is so much better than the other team, or you love this pick or whatever case, because ultimately at the end of this thing, you guys will be able to weigh in via polls, via comments, via feedback on which team you think is better, uh, which team you would much rather see, which team you think could beat the other one, which team you guys think can, you know, magically, if we can time travel back to 1979 or 1991 or 98 or 2012, you know, it's 2016 when a lot of these guys were on the Falcons. Uh, you know, we can kidnap these guys, put them all uh, Bill and Ted style in, in into one roster and, and go out there and secretly win a, a, a Falcons a Super Bowl. So provide I, that. I don't approve of this wording of this message. OK, well, you know. You know, I don't know. <laughs> We're not kidnapping anyone here, Derek. <laughs> I was gonna, I, yeah, I was, I was gonna advocate for kidnapping, but I, I'm sure the people at Locked On probably don't want me promoting, you know, kidnapping on, on this episode. So we'll, we'll leave it at that, guys. Uh, you know, we will borrow some folks. We will coerce with money some people to come. Uh, on this uh, adventure with us but uh, guys that will do it for us here i appreciate you tuning in uh, look forward to your feedback on on the first six rounds tomorrow we'll be back with the last six rounds cleaning up this draft and yeah no no special teams fortunately alan 
bullied me and said that special teams does not matter. Uh, but we, we, we will have the last laugh. It's just false information. Like, I don't bully anyone. <laughs> I told him, have Matt Bryant. It is what it is. He did. And, he did. He Alan basically telegraphed the, the, the perfect special teams pickups. I, I think he basically, what what was it like? I had Matt Bryant. You had. Young Ho. Remember. Young Wei Ku. I just like yeah. him, Young Ho. I'm sorry. Young Wei Ku. Uh, I gave you Matt Bosch. I remember you gave me Eric Weems. Yeah, you love Eric Weems and Matt Bausch so much. I was like, take him. I'll take Michael Kanan and Alan Robinson. Okay, there you go. Yeah, so it's fitting. It's fitting. Um, so he he pretty you much. You had your fullback. You got your fullback. <laughs> he te- well, if we did do special teams, Alan basically telegraphed exactly how it would have went down. So he's he's absolutely correct on that. I, I know um, someone might make a case for Adam Jennings, but uh, we can't do it. Wow. I didn't think we would get an Adam Jennings reference uh, on this Falcons all-time draft series you know next thing you're gonna be throwing out like i don't know frank omayale or, or something like that you know it's just some random oh, wow. i don't know that one that, okay. that was over my head all right well you know you're a wrestling guy isn't he in wrestling isn't he no that's quinn oma jaka or something oh yeah i'm Dang definitely it. butchering his name if, if you wanted to hear me butcher a name you got there at least yeah man i sorry for confusing someone you know an african uh, offensive tackle that we drafted in 05 with another African offensive tackle that we drafted in 06. Man, dang. That's my bad, guys. All right. Anyway, <laughs> we're done rambling at the end of today's episode. That's it, guys. Appreciate it. Till then. So, guys, that's going to do it for us here on today's uh, All Time Draft Series Part Three. We got one more part to go, and Alan and I will be finishing up the defense tomorrow, but then on Fridays, uh, audio version of the podcast thursday night's video version of the podcast we'll do a q a a mailbag uh and you guys can submit your questions to me uh via twitter via facebook at locked on falcons you can send an email to locked on falcons at mail.com or of course you can leave a comment here on the locked on falcons youtube channel uh as all those places to provide your feedback to uh answer some q a questions May also talk a little bit about sort of my initial prognosis of some of those top guys in the 2023 draft as well on um, Thursday slash Friday's episode. So definitely want to stay tuned and check that out. But of course, tomorrow we'll be back with more of the all time draft series and you guys can look at our entire rosters, both offense and defense in their entirety and then vote uh, to see who is the winner. Put out another poll on Lockdown Falcons on Twitter, as well as Lockdown Falcons community tab on youtube for you guys to vote on the first six rounds of the defense as well from today's episode uh so go check that out if you haven't voted already so far uh you can weigh in on that uh tonight or tomorrow or whatever the case may be so uh all right guys done rambling appreciate it till then